Landlords are doing emergency rent cuts so they can fill their vacant houses and apartments. The signal that we are likely to see both home prices and the rent component of inflation decline into the future. And in some cases, these rent cuts are big, everyone. Like on this listing outside of Phoenix, it's a four bed, two bath house that was originally listed for 2,200 a month. Well, in the span of a month and a half, they cut the rent by 15% down to 1850. At the same time, we're seeing seeing apartment developers do crazy leasing concessions. For instance, where I am in Nashville, there's dozens of apartments that are giving away three months free rent, which is a 25% rent discount. And these rent cuts, everyone, there's something that could cause these investors to eventually be forced to sell their properties because declining rents in combination with rising interest rates is a nasty cocktail for landlords, particularly Wall Street landlords. Because the way that these Wall Street landlords look at real estate, everyone, is by comparing the return they can get, which is called the cap rate, to a benchmark, in this case, the 10-year treasury. And what do you see? That for most of the last decade, the cap rate was way above the 10-year treasury yield in America. But what do you notice, folks? Over the last year, we see the 10-year treasury has now surged up above the cap rate, meaning that a Wall Street investor can now make more money by just buying a 10-year government bond than buying a property and renting it out. With the consequence now being that I believe the Wall Street investor fire sale has started. We are beginning to see homes pop up on the MLS, on the for sale housing market that are owned by Wall Street investors. They're getting out of the market in cities like Phoenix, everyone. Take a look at this listing. It's a three bed, two bath that just went on the market for 350,000. But what's interesting here is the history, folks. Pay attention to this history. This investor bought this house in June, 2022 at the peak of the bubble for 395,000. They then immediately listed it for rent and then had to cut the rent by 15% and have since elected to say, hey, it's not worth it. We're gonna sell the property in an 11.4% loss only 15 months after we bought it because it's not worth it. And I did a little digging on that listing, everyone. It's owned by a corporate entity that owns over 3,000 houses. So that is a big Wall Street investor selling their home at a loss in Phoenix because they couldn't rent it out at the rent that they needed to make the investment make sense at today's interest rates, which is why the capital is starting to get pulled from these Wall Street investors. There's a big shortage of capital now in the home buying space. We're seeing it reported by companies like Blackstone. They're saying they're not able to raise the same funds they used to. We're seeing it in the mortgage-backed security market. The single-family residential mortgage-backed security market is down about 85% over the last two years and how much money these companies are able to raise. But before you get too excited about Wall Street investors selling out in your neighborhood and increasing inventory and pushing down prices, understand that this decline in the rental market is not happening everywhere in America. It's kind of a bifurcation rental downturn with 71 of the largest 100 U.S. cities reporting negative rent growth over the last year. So about 70% of cities are showing declining rents, but really the biggest drop in rents are once again in those cities like Austin, Phoenix, Vegas, Atlanta, San Francisco, Salt Lake, Orlando, Jacksonville, Raleigh. That's where the rents are going down the most, whereas rents are still going up in cities like Hartford, Milwaukee, Chicago, Louisville, Kansas City, Providence, and Boston. So it's a similar story playing out. If you guys have watched my channel for the last year, you've no doubt heard me talk about how the Midwest and Northeast has been more resilient in terms of home prices. Well, those areas are also more resilient in terms of rent. The rents are still going up in those areas while the rents are going down in the South. And the reason for that is because of home building and apartment construction. The builders went absolutely crazy in the Sun Belt and Mountain West regions of America over the last two years. And now we're seeing that supply get dumped onto the market. And what's even crazier is we're gonna see more of this supply into the future because the number of apartments that are either under construction or permitted for construction is now over 1.1 million towards the end of 2023. And you can see this is near a record high. It basically matches the record we saw in the apartment construction backlog back in 1973. And you can see this level is more than double the long-term average of apartment construction. So what this says is that we have lots of units actively under construction or about to break ground, which means more inventory and more supply 
supply is coming to the rental market, with RealPage reporting that we're gonna see north of 600,000 market rate multifamily units completed in 2024, which makes it certain that 2024 will see more multifamily units delivered than any other part of the past four decades. But here's where things get even crazier, everyone. All this new apartment supply is you know, coming online, is gonna come online and push rents down, right? And that's gonna create issues for investors and you know, force some investors to sell, which could lower home prices and apartment prices further. But there's also another issue here for the housing market more broadly, and that's the fact that if rents go down, it's gonna cause home buyer demand to go down because if someone's renting an apartment or renting a house and they find out that they can keep their rent the same or cut their rent, they're gonna stay a renter. They're not gonna take the plunge on seven to 8% mortgage rates and buy a house if the rental market is soft. With CNBC reporting that September home sales dropped to the lowest level since the foreclosure crisis, well, we're gonna see those sales subdued from first time home buyers because they have no incentive to buy in a declining rent environment, especially when it's already just so much more expensive to buy than to rent. For instance, according to Reventure App, in Nashville, Tennessee, it's 48% more expensive to buy a house right now than it is to rent an apartment. That buy versus rent differential, that's the highest buy versus rent differential in Nashville's history going back 20 years. And you can actually see normally in Nashville, uh, this housing market was cheaper to buy than it was to rent, indicated by these negative numbers. Now it's way more expensive to buy than it was to rent, which means that buyer demand is going to stay subdued until this figure starts to come down closer to the long-term average. We're not going to see a real housing market recovery in Nashville. We're not going to see a real housing market recovery in Dallas either, where it's now 52% more expensive to buy a house compared to renting an apartment. That once again is a record high in a metro where it was normally cheaper to buy a house than rent. How are we going to see a recovery in a place like Salt Lake City where it's an astronomical 106% more expensive to buy a house. I mean, take a look at this, everyone. The typical yearly house payment for a home buyer in Salt Lake City is 42,000 compared to 20,000 annual rent for an apartment. I mean, what first time home buyer in Salt Lake is buying in this environment? And when I just look on Zillow, like in my area, I mean, I see so many examples of this, everyone. Just take a look at these two listings. The first is a house for rent in a neighborhood called Spring Hill, which is south of Nashville. You can see that this is a four bed, two and a half bath house from Tricon Residential for Rent. It's $19.99 a month. You can see they've had to do big rent cuts. Originally, they were at $22.69 a month. Now they're at $19.99 a month. But what's interesting is that in the same neighborhood, you have this house just down the street for sale, which is actually smaller. It's less bedrooms and less square feet, but it's on the market for $4.55, which is a $3,000 a month payment at today's prices and mortgage rates. So basically the same house in the same neighborhood, you could either rent for $2,000 a month or buy and pay $3,000 a month. I mean, who's going to buy? No one's gonna buy in that environment, which is why mortgage applications to buy a house are now literally at the lowest level since 1994. So I want you to think about this even further, right? If it's way more expensive to buy than it is to rent, theoretically, that should increase the demand for rentals, right? The problem is even with that increased demand for rentals from people who are foregoing buying, we're still seeing the rents drop. We are still seeing apartment developers give three months free rent. I mean, take a look at this, everyone. This is a luxury apartment community in Nashville called Haven at the Gulch, and I'm giving them some free promotion. They earned it with this title and this leasing special. Three months free, plus up to 8,000 in additional incentives when you lease today. I mean, I don't know if that's a typo. Maybe it must be a typo. I'm not sure, but let's just do some math on what that means, everyone. If you were to rent their smallest one bedroom floor plan, that's around 1,600 a month. If you were to get three months free, that's a 25% rent discount, which would take you down to 1,200 a month, plus whatever other incentives they have. I mean, that's to live in a brand new unit in a cool part of Nashville, that's a pretty good deal. Or two bed, two bath, 2650. If you were to get three months free, that would take you down close to 2000 a month, which if you were to split the two bedroom with someone would be a thousand each to again, live in a brand new building in downtown Nashville. And I actually got my lease renewal from my building in Nashville, and they are going to give me two months free rent on my renewal. They're gonna give me two months free on me renewing my lease. So I'm seeing this with my own eyes here, and I'm saying to myself, there's something going 
going on in this housing market and maybe it's not going on everywhere it's not happening in the same way let's say in chicago or boston that it's happening in nashville austin or phoenix but i gotta tell you folks these pandemic boom towns they have so many headwinds hitting them all at the same time right now there's only really like two ways this current situation can resolve itself either home prices come down to make it more affordable for a first-time home buyer to make the jump into buying and to also make it more profitable for an investor to buy because if home prices go down then that would cause the cap rate to go up which would increase the return over the 10-year treasury and make it more attractive to buy against so we need prices to go down so the cap rate can go up alternatively the cap rate could go up if rents went up so if rents were to just go up that would make it more profitable to be an investor it would provide a bigger incentive for someone to be a home buyer but that's not happening right now rents are actually down year over year asking rents for apartments are actually down 1.2 percent year over year according to data from apartment lists so the rents are now going down by marginal percentage on an average basis in america not everyone is seeing this yet but they are going down which means actually that this blue line here which is the inflation calculation for rent you can see that this blue line which is still 7.8 percent in the cpi inflation this is also going to go down more into the future because very important that you folks pay attention to this. The inflation rent lags the asking rent reported by apartment list and Zillow and RealPage. It lags it by about 18 months. So you can see the big boom in asking rents that occurred in 2021. Well, it was 18 months later when the rent in inflation peaked, suggesting that we will continue to see the rent calculation in inflation go down, which means that we could see inflation overall go down into the future because rent is about one third of the inflation calculation. Now, there's a lot of people right now, including myself sometimes, when I look at the government debt and I look at how treasury yields are skyrocketing, and I say to myself, well, you know, all these people seem to be thinking that inflation is going to get worse because the government's issuing all these bonds and we're going to need people to pay for it and we're running deficits and oil prices are going up. So inflation is going to get worse. And that's all true. But rent is one third of the inflation calculation. It's a major part of it. So if we know that rent is going to continue to go down in CPI, that's a big head start in bringing the overall inflation number lower. Now, what does that mean for practical purposes for you as a home buyer in terms of projecting the economy? Well, it says to me that it's very clear clear that disinflationary forces are at work here, right? What we're seeing in the rental market and the housing market. But yet we have Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve. I mean, they're still going out there saying rates are going to stay high for longer. And Powell actually even said yesterday that inflation is still too high and that lower economic growth is likely needed to bring it down. Historical records saying that a sustainable return to our 2% inflation goal is likely to require a period of below trend growth and some further softening in labor market conditions. And the reason Powell is saying that, that we need lower economic growth, is because he's seeing some of the economic reports about retail sales being higher than expected. He's seeing you know, the low initial unemployment claims as signals that the economy is too hot. So he wants to make the economy less hot through keeping interest rates higher for longer. So that makes sense. Except the problem is we are seeing the downturn occur in the housing market. We're seeing it occur in the rental market in real time, which suggests to me that at some point, the Fed really risks breaking something because these rates are going up as rents are going down. I mean, that's a crazy concoction when you really think about it, everyone. Rents down, rates up. It's something that has the potential to flush out many, many real estate investors from the market. And in fact, this situation is already causing the values of apartment buildings to collapse. With the Wall Street Journal reporting that multifamily apartments have gone down about 22% in value from their peak. They're basically now back to the level they were at before the pandemic, and they're likely to go down further into the future which creates big problems in the commercial real estate sector, everyone, because as the rents are going down, as the values of apartment buildings are going down, the landlords for these apartment buildings are now needing to refinance their mortgage at higher interest rates, often much higher interest rates. Usually mortgages on apartment buildings are only five to 10 year terms rather than the 30 year term for a residential mortgage, meaning that there's lots of apartment owners who are trying to refinance right now and their interest rate is going from three to 7% as the value of their building is going down and their rents are going down. I mean, there's a potential here for a 
big blowout in the commercial real estate sector where we see a lot of apartment landlords default on their mortgage and have to give back the keys, which could cause apartment values to go down by more, which could actually end up causing apartment rents to go down by more as well, because if people buy distressed apartments at discounts, they would have the flexibility to then cut rents to undercut the market and ensure their occupancy. Anyway, I'm starting to speculate a bit about the future, but I hope that you guys as a home buyer or real estate investor understand the big warning that this downturn in the rental market presents for the housing market overall. And before signing off everyone, I'm going to do a rapid fire round. I haven't done a rapid fire round in a couple months, but what we're gonna look at here are the cities in America that are the least affordable to buy comparing to rent. This is a calculation, especially if you're a first time home buyer, you really need to pay attention to. And you can see on, on this map on ReVentureApp, it's primarily the cities kind of on the west coast of America where the cost to buy is way more than the cost to rent. Areas like San Jose, San Francisco, Santa Cruz, interestingly, Fargo, North Dakota, Green Bay, Wisconsin actually made it on there, Salinas, California, Seattle, Washington, Boulder, Colorado, Salt Lake City, LA, Los Angeles, California, all of these areas are over two times more expensive to buy a house than rent an apartment. That's what 100% or higher means on the buy to rent ratio. Now, what is interesting is that there are actually some cities today, even with seven to 8% mortgage rates, where it is still cheaper to buy than it is to rent. There's a handful of cities, about 10 to 15, where it is still cheaper to buy than it is to rent, largely due to the fact that home prices in these cities are just so cheap to begin with that even the fact that mortgage rates went from you know four to seven, that's still actually a lower payment to buy. Now these areas where it's still cheaper to buy would be Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Shreveport, Louisiana, Mobile, Alabama, Jackson, Mississippi, Montgomery, Alabama, Gulfport, Mississippi, Lafayette, Louisiana, Charleston, West Virginia, and then you have some cities that are close like Columbus, Georgia, New Orleans, South Bend, Augusta, Beaumont, Texas, Brownsville, Texas, and interestingly, Naples, Florida made it on there too. If it's still cheaper to buy than it is to rent or it's roughly equivalent, we could see buyer demand stay strong in those markets because there's still theoretically an incentive for first time buyers to purchase. And one thing I would suggest if you're a home buyer investor who wants to understand your housing market better, go to ReVenture app. We actually have a completely redesigned website now in front end. Go to the search and type in your city. We're gonna start out by looking at home value, but if you want more information on this buy versus rent differential in particular, you can upgrade and become a premium member and see in every zip code in America, the difference between buying and renting. You can also compare different cities and metro areas against each other in terms of their buy versus rent affordability and potentially find some new areas you might not have been considering before that are a bit more affordable. Buy versus rent differential data point is premium on ReVenture app. You do have to pay to look at that data. The cost is $39 a month. You can downgrade at any time once you're done looking at it. Alternatively, you can simply sign up for the free plan on ReVenture app and get access to eight basic data points on the housing market. Either way, go to www.ReVenture app right now so you can do in-depth research on your housing market and have a better idea of where home prices and rents are heading into the future. Note that ReVenture app 2.0 just launched, so you might experience a bug here or there in the system. If you do, let me know in the comment section below.